this is so unfortunate. In this video, we will see how the passenger of this vehicle that crashed into an electrical box, how she died trying to push this vehicle off. Stay tuned until the end of this video because I'm going to show you what to do if you find yourself in this situation, how to recognize when you're in danger, and what to do next in order to stay alive. Stay tuned. Yeah, so around 2.30 a.m. we received reports of a traffic collision. Units reported a single vehicle over a power box with active fire. We were unable to, uh, they quickly extinguished the fire using a fire extinguisher. We were unable to make access to the patient inside the vehicle uh, because the power was active. Uh, they were being electrocuted as we showed up. We worked with our partners, SCG&E, who uh, isolated the power uh, to the box. We were able to remove the vehicle from the box. Uh, we had one patient that was transported with uh, some electrocution burns to UCSD and we did have one patient that was 1144 at scene. So SEG&E is currently still working on isolating the power. SDPD is conducting their investigation at the moment and we don't have any uh, information on driver status that deceased was an occupant in the vehicle. Unfortunately, they did try to get outside the vehicle after they made contact with the electrical box. One of the things that we always suggest is that if you do find yourself in a position that you come into contact with live power lines, uh, your safest bet is to stay in the vehicle until we arrive. We can make the scene safe and safely get you out of the vehicle. So unfortunately, that didn't happen today. Welcome to Firehouse Heavyweights TV. I'm King Jerome, and in this channel, I teach parents how to keep yourselves and your family safe from vehicle accidents, from fires, and from medical emergencies. Now let's talk about this video. It's a very unfortunate video what happened here to the, to the passenger. I'm not sure if the driver was intoxicated or not, but, but what I want to talk about is how the passenger died. It wasn't from impact. It wasn't from any of that. It wasn't from being ejected from the vehicle. It was from being electrocuted. She got barbecued. This happens with downed power lines that may happen to land in your vehicle and you're inside, or you run over an electrical box or something like that. What happens is the vehicle itself is energized. It's energized even though you're inside. The reason you're not feeling anything inside of it is because the tires are thick enough, uh, have enough rubber and air to create a buffer to create a buffer that you are not being affected it turns different once you attempt to step outside this out of the vehicle once you get outside it's all different now what ended up unfortunately killing this young lady was her touching the vehicle and the ground at the same time this is known as touch potential electricity likes to travel and the the path of least resistance from an area of high voltage down to one that has lower voltage kind of like water and osmosis things like that from higher concentration down to a lower concentration so it's the same situation here the power line going to the car was the high voltage and going to the ground was the low voltage the female touching the vehicle and the ground at the same time is the path of least resistance so the electricity passed through her killing her and it completed that circuit I want to tell you about the difference between step potential and touch potential touch potential is what we just talked about is when you are touching the object that is energized and touching the ground at the same time your body becomes the path of least resistance with and a pretty much a conductor of all that electricity that your body's not designed to take in, which is why it kills you. As a matter of fact, in EMS, we do use electricity on people when they are in a shockable rhythm, 
when they're in cardiac arrest because the heart muscle itself, right, the heart muscle itself is able, creates its own electricity. You may not believe it, but it does. It creates its own electricity and it has pacemaker cells pretty much that keep the heart at its pace going the way it goes. When people get older and they have heart attacks and heart issues and things like that, sometimes they get things called pacemakers. Those pacemakers give a little electrical charge. That way it starts the whole process of the heart beating at a normal rhythm. What happens when you get electrocuted and why these end up being fatal is that you may receive that electric shock and enough electric shock that it throws your heart into something we call ventricular fibrillation or V-fib. There's a thing that is called a synchronized cardioversion that is used in the medical field whenever someone is having an extremely fast heart rate and they can't get it to slow down, that a machine has to time when to perfectly send that electric shock. It's at a very certain time during the whole heart heartbeat process in order not to kill the person and in order to reset the heart to start uh, beating like normal. When it is done out of time, the person can die. And that's probably what happened here. Step potential is a little different. So step potential is when you're walking and the area that you are has less energy than your other foot. So this diagram right here is going to show you give you a better visual of what I'm trying to say. Whenever a power line or an electrical box or something like that is touching the ground, it creates almost like a, an, a radius of electricity on the ground. The ground can literally be energized. So the closer you are to the actual source, the stronger the current's gonna be. The more you go out, the less power there is gonna be there. Now, it's easy to show you in this diagram that there's little separations, but in real life, you don't know when's the next change, right? You don't know if it, if it can change half half of voltage. I'm not, I'm not a big electrical guy, so excuse me if I'm getting my terms incorrect. But the voltages, you're not going to be able to tell once it starts dropping. So if you start taking big steps walking away or walking towards a scene like this, you now, again, what we talked about earlier, electricity likes to travel through the path of least resistance from a higher level of potential, energy potential, to a lower one. So if one foot is stepping in an area of higher energy potential and your other foot is in a lower one, that electricity is going to travel right through you and is going to zap you possibly throw into V-fib, and you die on the spot. This is a big reason when we as first responders arrive to an accident scene and they hit a power pole or something like that, we do not approach the scene until we have confirmation that the power has been turned off because of this. Even our boots, even though our fire boots can be pretty thick, maybe it can sometimes be a couple inches thick, it's still not going to be enough to save us from getting electrocuted. I want you guys to be able to recognize when you're in actual danger. If you guys are driving, you accidentally hit something like these ladies did or accidentally crash into an electric pole and stuff. Everybody, let, let's say airbags deployed, everybody's okay. The first thing that you guys need to be able to do is try to look around to see if you see any downed power lines or anything like that, right? If you see some, if you see some on the ground, Maybe some of it is draped on your on the top of your car. Please, please, please do not get out of your car. Just stay in your car. Do not get out. If you ran over a junction box or something like that, electrical box, it's going to be a lot harder to see. But if you think you might have hit it, I would say don't take the gamble. Just do not take the gamble and sit tight. Call 911 and they will come and help you. Okay? Now, what do you do? If your vehicle starts to catch fire. Now this is a different situation now. Because fire gets hot. And smoke can kill you very quickly. So in this situation. What you need to do. 
you need to attempt to open the door. Okay? Once you got the door open, this is where it gets very tricky. You cannot just step out with one foot while holding on because you're going to create touch potential. You have to hop out and land with your two feet at the same time without touching anything. Once you do that, then either you're going to bunny hop or you're going to shuffle half of your foot at a time. Very, very, very small shuffles. You got to move in small shuffles because if you don't, you run the risk of creating that Maybe a one voltage difference from high energy to low energy potential that you will complete the circuit and get electrified. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. It's National Teen Driver Safety Week, and I want you guys to make sure that you guys are all good when it comes to this. Stay safe, stay alive, and I'll see you guys in the next video.